All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. And today we'll be printing PETCF, which is the fourth and final bamboo carbon fiber filament. And then it'll be the last one that we're printing for this series. We may do a series with some third party brands in the future, but this will be the fourth and final how to for the bamboo labs once. Next week, we'll do a review. We'll take an in-depth look at each of the different frames and you guys will get to vote on which one that I turn into a drone. So as a reminder up to this point, if you haven't seen the other videos, I've printed PLA CF, PETG CF, PAHT CF, and today the final one is PET CF. So a couple reminders here, we'll be printing a drone frame. So I do have an old iFlight drone with all the guts in it. It's got a broken frame on it right now. I do have replacement frames for it, but I thought it would be cool to see if we can make a carbon fiber filament drone fly. So before you guys go out there and try to print a five inch drone, let's see if we can make this little tiny drone fly first. Second reminder, which has been a pretty big topic of conversation in the comments and everything is the AMS compatibility. So as I've stated previously, I'm following everything in the product page because I want you guys to get the experience of as if you actually read the product page from Bamboo and followed all the steps there, what would that uh, process look like? I understand that some of you aren't comfortable with running the carbon fiber filaments through the AMS and I totally respect that. I'm trying to give everybody documentation on what will happen if you follow the product pages. So hopefully that helps clear up some of the misunderstanding there. And in the final, I will pull all the tubes out of the AMS and we'll take a look at it and see if it did some unnecessary wear and tear to my AMS. So we'll compare it against the tube that I used the most for the, the majority of my PLA and we'll compare it against um, the tube that I have been using. For PETCF, it actually doesn't recommend running it through the AMS. And man, you can tell why, because the carbon fiber, the filament feels like sandpaper. It's like really, really rough. Um, so we won't be doing that. I will be using a side mounted spool holder. So I will go over the differences with printing with that in the slicer settings, as well as how you load the filaments a little bit different. If you don't have an AMS, you probably know all about all of those settings already. But if you've only been printing from an AMS like I have, this will be a helpful um, way to show you how to set everything up and the differences between uh, printing from a spool and printing from the AMS. So if all of that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything set up. All right, so here we are at the filament page and we've already printed the PAHT, the PLA, the PETG. Today we'll be printing the PETCF. So let's take a look at the product page here. So dry out before use, we will be following the dry out instructions. Not AMS compatible. So like I said in the intro, we'll be using a, a side mounted filament holder or spool holder. Um, so I'll show you which one I use for that. You can use whichever one you want with that. Um, so it is kind of pricey, half a kilogram, 45 bucks. Uh, wouldn't run a lot of this unless you just absolutely need some stuff, but uh, we'll do that. So here again, is showing normal PACF and then the differences between PET uh, CF here between wet and dry. Here's some more differences between normal PACF, PETCF. So I guess the PET and the PAHT are what are going to replace the PACF. I got my X1 carbon in December and it came with like half a kilogram or half a kilo of this PACF. And I bought another spool of it at the time, but it has since been removed as I mentioned in other videos here. So here's the thermal resistance of it as well. Interesting that it doesn't show the PAHT um, up against this as well. So see up to 150 C. Okay, printing setup. 0.6 hardened steel nozzle recommended. That's what I have loaded in there. 
these are capable, as I've mentioned before, I've not had bad luck or I've not had good luck with the 0.4 nozzle. I do have a 0.8. I've never used that. I've haven't had a, a reason to do that, but, um, it is compatible, capable of that, but it does recommend the one that I have been using. Enclosed printer is recommended. It does say open frame printer capable with a star. I'll let you guys read the fine print on that, but generally these higher temp ones the ones that need um, higher temperatures to print generally need that enclosure for that and again you could put an enclosure on there we could go down a big rabbit hole with that do what you feel is necessary on there i have an enclosure so i don't need to worry about it and we'll take a look at the printing tips 90 C for 10 hours. Recommended drying temperature is 80 C for five hours in a filament dryer or 90 C for 10 hours on heat bed. Do not exceed 90 C, the spool may melt. And then you'll see here on the box, it says 85 C for eight to 12 hours, 90 C for 10 hours. I love how bamboo does that. Look at that 85 plus or minus five degrees for eight to 12 hours. So 10 is right in the middle of there and 90 there. I'm going to do 85 at eight and we'll see what happens with that. You guys do what you want to do and what you feel comfortable with. But I do think that's kind of funny. 85 C 90 C eight to 12, 10. Ah, oh, this has been the fun, probably the best part of the carbon fiber uh, filament uh, piece here is just all the contradictions of bamboo and their support and what they say on the wiki and what they say on the product pages. And even in the same paragraph right here, we could see that it's close, but not quite the same thing on there. And they go back to the wiki. Oh, the joys of the joys of dealing with bamboo labs. So that's it for the product page. Let's go ahead and get this thing dry. All right, so here we are back at the bamboo X1C and we'll go ahead and get this ready for drying. So the first thing that we'll need to do is go in here and hit the prepare button. So we'll go into our settings, go into utilities, dry filament. We can change it here. We can do that later, but there's the PET. And we'll change that here in a minute, but let's go ahead and let it prepare itself. All right, now that it's done, we'll go ahead and get it loaded. All right, so let's take a look at the filament roll. So we'll see PETCF. This is only half a kilo here. So you'll see it's not as much as the other ones. So we'll go set it down on there and again you do need to cover this there's two ways to cover it one is with an old box which i've shown in previous episodes and probably the preferred way is to use one of these which i printed out from an high from a high temp material this is out of pc it also recommends PAHTCF as a material that you can print for this. It needs to be something that can handle the high temps of the uh, drying here. So now that that's ready, we'll go ahead and get everything set up to go ahead and dry it. All right, so now that we are here, we'll go ahead and hit the confirm. And it is set at 90 C for 12 hours. We're gonna do the 85, whoops. We're going to do 10 hours. And that's a good balance between everything. <clears throat> I don't want to do the 90 C because that's the max temp of the spool. And I don't want to ruin that and ruin all the filament in there. So we'll do 85 it says eight to 12 hours. We'll put that in the middle since it did say 10 on the product page. We'll do it for 10 hours. And if it doesn't print correctly, then I'll redry it at 90 C for 10 hours and we'll try it that way. But I think we'll be okay here. These are the reasons why I'm doing it. 
Again, I'm not telling you to do anything. This is what I'm doing and you'll get to see the results. 85, 10, we'll hit start and I'll see you in 10 hours. All right, now that it's done drying, we'll go ahead and get it out and get it loaded on the spool. All right, so before loading the spool and getting the filament to the extruder, we actually need to heat the extruder up and get it ready. So how we do that, if you're not familiar, if you've only been doing things in the AMS, we're gonna need to go to the little switches. And then this first temperature right here is our nozzle temperature. The printing temperature for PETCF is anywhere from 260 to 290. For loading it, we're just gonna put it on 260. Oops. And we'll go ahead and get that heated up. All right, and since I have the side mounted spool, I went ahead and just took a, an extra piece of this tubing and ran it from the um, side of it right there just so I could easily get it in there. So now what we'll do is we'll just take the filament and feed it to the extruder. just like so. And I'll get that done and I'll see you at the extruder. All right, so once you got the filament pushed through, you're gonna wanna go ahead and hit this extruder button and you're gonna wanna push some of that filament through kind of like you're purging it. You're not gonna really hear anything, but I'll show you that the uh, new black filament is being squirted through the extruder as we speak. So as you can see, as I hit the extruder button, it's squirting right out of there. And we should be ready to print. All right, so here we are in the slicer. And we have our drone loaded up with all the parts and everything like that. So let's go ahead and get it set up. So we'll set everything up here in this first slot, even though we're not going to use the AMS when we're using the spool. I'll show you how we get around that here in a minute. But we do need to set up the temperatures and everything for the filaments here. So we'll set it up under number one. And what we need to do is find the preset for the PETCF. And as you'll notice, I don't see it anywhere on here just yet. And with some of the newer filaments, you may not see them on here. Or you may have uh, missed this in the setup when you were setting this up. But how you get the settings for that is you hit the add and remove filament and there's the PETCF. I usually just click all and confirm that way I have all of the filaments in there. And then on this one, I can go back in and select for PETCF. And what that does for me is puts in the correct uh, flow rates. You see, this is a flow ratio of one, the correct nozzle temperature. We're gonna be using the high temp plate. So it sets that for us. And again, it sets the speed of everything with the volumetric speed. So that's the reason that we'll wanna use that. So we'll go ahead and we have that selected there. Again, select the first one, hold shift, select the last one. All I'm gonna do is press the number one on the keypad and that changes all of them to the number one, which is now all of the settings for the PETCF. So we're ready to print. So let's go ahead and slice. So we'll see this one's um, on the heavier side there. So 22.87 grams, it's gonna take about a minute. We knew it was gonna take a little bit longer because the volumetric speed was slower over here. So we know that that's the gas pedal that it, uh, Bamboo at least uses to speed up and slow down their filament um, depending on the density and other properties of it. So now comes the next difference that we'll need to do. So normally we hit print plate, and it goes ahead and has everything selected here for us. So it's asking us to check to make sure this is mapping to the AMS slot. And if anybody's ever put a filament, I put the uh, TPU in the AMS slot and it read the RFID on it and immediately told me that it wouldn't do it. So I'm assuming that it's bringing up this warming, warning because it knows that it's not recommended in the AMS. So what I'm going to do is unselect the AMS. And if you hover over the question mark there, you'll see enable, so print with the filament in the AMS. Disable AMS, print with the filament on an external spool, which is exactly what we're gonna do here. So we'll make sure that that's unchecked, and then we'll go ahead and send it. And I'll let you know how it prints. 
All right, so an hour later, we're all done printing the drone. And again, just like the PAHTCF, no errors on this little piece, no errors there. Looks really good, looks really shiny like the PETG. Uh, so let's get it out and take a look at it. All right, so let's pull it off the build plate here. All right, nice and flat. Couple of little gaps there. Not bad, but super rigid. Wow, very rigid. Let's take a look at this piece. Still flimsy, but more rigid than the other ones. Little bit of an error there but so far so good all right i'll get all four of them ready and we'll take a look at all of them against each other in the next video thanks for watching